But today we're going to a department store because there's one bike. Total price, $434.79. Ah! Hey guys, Josh here with Daily Mountain Bike Rider. And today is a super fun day because today is new bike day. But as you can tell from the title of this video, it's not a typical new bike like what's behind me, my full suspension bike or, or even a normal higher end entry level hardtail. But today we're going to a department store because there's one bike I've been keeping my eye on for a while for a sale. Today's the day to get it. So what do you think it is? Are we going to Walmart? Going to Target? Who goes there? Or are we going to Dick's Sporting Goods? Maybe the third one. Let's go. Of course, we gotta jump in the uh, Daily Mountain Bike Rider Mobile. <laughs> My Yaris. Let's go. Traffic. Don't they realize I'm on my way to get a new bicycle? Come on! Ah, there it is. The store my bike is coming from. Now, there's a lot of popular department stores to buy bikes from. Walmart is the number one, but I think almost all their bikes are under like 200 bucks. I need a bike that is actually trail worthy. And so because of that, we're going to a place that you have to spend a little bit more money. Should come as no surprise, we're at Dick's Sporting Goods. And for those of you who aren't familiar, they have a couple of bikes that are great bang for your buck. And the one I'm about to buy, I've researched a ton about, I've actually seen some YouTube videos about from Kev Central, that guy is awesome. Maybe I'll have a link to his video about this bike, but let's see if it's a bike for me and the trail riding I do that's under 600 bucks. Let's check it out. And this right here, is why I'm here today. 20% off your entire purchase for scorecard customers. But before we go to the bikes, there's one thing you always gotta do when you're at Dick's Sporting Goods. Whenever you go to Dick's, you always gotta test out some putters. <laughs> ooh, ooh, look at this red one. Ooh, this thing looks fancy. Okay, let's see if I can make it. Well, I, I made it in eventually, but Let's go get the bike. So many options. So little money. Can you help me get a bike that's hanging up? Sure, yeah. I'm interested in I'm looking at the nicest one you got. Let's see if you know what the nicest one you got is. So they're in the process of getting my bike down, but what else do I need? Ooh, 300 gel base. I wonder how many gel base my saddle is. Hmm. Um, I think we can come down this way as long as, you know, I got it. So Jody's giving the bike a, a quick once over for, uh, and you guys do this for every bike you said? Every bike that comes out, yep. Gotta make sure the brakes work before I go try to pop some wheelies in the parking lot. Right, yeah. Um, so there's that for ya. Cool. And then, um. Must read before writing. Total price, $434.79. All right guys, I got it on the way home. Time to set this thing up and take it for a trail ride. But first, I'm tempted to try a wheelie, but I think I might fall on my butt. All right, well, I can barely do a wheelie. This bike needs to be set up, but I'm pretty stoked, so let's get home. Later. All right guys, so I got the bike home and I brought it in the garage and literally the only thing I did to set this thing up was I put on my own pedals and then I adjusted the brakes. The brakes were adjusted okay. I just basically put the pads as far out as they could go, brush it up to a side and then made it so when I pull with one finger with the brake lever set up, it basically locks out the brake. So I set them up in a way that, I, that they're super touchy and that's how I want them. But besides that, the bike was dialed and a lot of people, I posted about it on my Instagram and a lot of people are like, Josh, what are you doing? Are you gonna return this bike? Is this just a garbage bike for fun? And I'm like, no, I bought this bike because it really is one of the best bikes around. So before I go ride it, which I'm about to do right now, I might as well tell you a little bit about why I bought this bike. All right, so let's go over the bike real quick. This is the Nishiki Colorado Comp, and this is in a 27.5 plus. Right off the bat, you notice something special about this bike. It has a one by 11 SRAM NX drivetrain. And this has a SRAM cassette, a SRAM derailleur, a shifter, as well as a chain. And then it has just an off-brand crank, which I think is uh, Nishiki. That's the only thing I'm worried about because I've bent those in the past. 
It has a full aluminum frame that has a great matte color to it. Um, on there, it's got 27 and a half inch plus tires. These are Kenda tires, and these are 27.5 by 2.8. The brakes are just kind of an entry level um, Tektro Aries. It's a mechanical disc brake. Like I said, I have them set them up so that they will grab very quickly and uh, break instantly and that's kind of what I want. Besides that, it just got a standard seat post like most bikes come with. It's got a pretty long stem that's pretty ancient, um, but it's got decent grips. They aren't lock on, but they're gonna give good grip. And the fork, last but not least, is a Suntour XCM. And the cool thing about this is though it is kind of a cheaper coil fork, it does have 34 millimeter stanchions. It has a lockout on it that I probably will not use and a little preload adjustment. So this whole bike comes in with the discount I got at $434, a super great deal. And I'm going to do nothing to it, except for, like I said, putting on my pedals and adjusting the brakes and go out and see if this bike can take normal trail usage. Gonna go off some jumps and gonna have fun. So gonna get out there and let's do it. All right, guys. So I just started my ride. I'm out here climbing on the Colorado and this thing is heavy <laughs> when the price gets low you have to make cuts somewhere and weight is always the first thing to go so this bike is not light besides that though the plus size tires really help to make the trail just a little smoother the only thing I would say negative about climbing besides the weight is this stem it's so big I feel like I'm on a large so it says medium, I would call this a large. All right, I'm gonna keep climbing and be back up in a minute. All right, dropping into cedar dust. I had to put my saddle down just a little bit. And this trail is a little more pedally. I can actually uh, stop pedaling and feel what this bike feels like under some turns and some movement. All right, so just uh, dropped my saddle, that was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I'm on a blue jump line. Woo! But this thing gets some air pretty well. Drop. Ah! The brakes are good. The brakes work super well. This fork is a little noisy, but it works okay. Oh, just impress those kids. You know, like I do. Anyway, this thing jumped really well. <laughs> that was extremely impressive. To be fair though, that was the first downhill of this bike. So it's pretty fresh and new. I'm curious after the fork wears in, how this is gonna go. It's got some, it's got some grease or something on it. So we'll see. Okay, Trevor, you ready? All right, following Trevor on the advanced jump line. I'm a little nervous. Gotta get some pedals in here. Ah! I didn't clear it. Trevor popped so high. Ah! I'm not gonna clear this. Neither is Trevor. But I'm gonna clear this. Ah! This spike is holding up so well, it's ridiculous. Woo! Trevor sent it deep. Oh, yeah. He killed it, Trevor. That thing is, you have to really pedal hard. Yeah. Big thanks to Trevor for leading me in. And the bike performed well. I'm very curious longevity wise, at the bottom of a long trail, how this thing is gonna perform. So, off to climb and Go down one of my favorite trails, SST. One shift later. So, I didn't make it far up the climbing trail when the derailleur hanger broke off. So, now I have a choice. Go back down the easy way or uh, go with a zero by zero drivetrain and go down. So, Let's go down, but first I have to, I have to figure this out. Six and a half hours later. 
All right, so made it to the top. I <laughs> took off the derailleur, tied the cable through the frame because there's a little hole there. It's like they were ready for this. Now I got this super fancy crank. I think that's gonna give me some more horsepower. So no pedaling, but I should be able to make it down and I have a huge derailleur in my pocket. So gosh, let's do it. All right, dropping into SST. Got my zero by zero drivetrain. Pretty stoked about that. Oh gosh. And it is, this bike's very, pretty quiet without the uh, chain on there. So that's pretty sweet. Woo! But the, the bike rides so well. One eternity later. So guys, it's been about a week since I rode the Colorado, if you couldn't tell by this beautiful beard I have here. Anyway, so um, I had such a good time on the bike. Besides the fact that I have the derailleur and the chain and the derailleur hanger in a bag because it broke. Um, I didn't have a chain on there. I went flying down my normal run, did a bunch of jumps and drops and obstacles and even like steep parts where the brakes worked and I, I kid you not, I love this bike. <laughs> so I'm gonna go take the bike back with the receipt, see if they'll return it, I'll bring you guys with me. But the truth is this, I don't wanna return this bike. I didn't buy the bike so that I could ride it and be done with it. I bought it because I wanted to see if it really is a good entry level bike for people looking to not spend an arm and a leg. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get another one I think I'm going to ride it like somebody who maybe is a little newer, not as aggressive as I am at riding. And I really wanna find out, are these bikes worth the price? And can they withstand normal trail use? So let's get over to Dick's and then it's time to keep testing. Walked in with a used bike, walked out with a new one. Pretty impressive for a Dick's Sporting Good bike. I want this bike to work. 